Hello and welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen, to our virtual classroom. Today we're going to be going over volume, specifically the volume of cubes and rectangular prisms. Uh, when you think of volume, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, we can see here in our definition, is that volume is the amount of space inside of a three-dimensional figure. It is the amount of space inside of a three-dimensional figure. Uh, think of, uh, for example, in science, oftentimes they, they use uh, liquid, like the amount of liquid that a cup or bottle can hold as, as a measure of its volume. But really, in, this, in, in a more strict sense, and in math, volume refers to the amount of space that that shape takes up. Even something like uh, a solid... Uh, piece of wood or something like that, even though technically nothing fits inside this, this still takes up space. This still takes takes up space. And so, uh, so, so yes, volume is the amount of space inside of a three-dimensional object. What do we mean by 3D? Well, consider a two-dimensional object, like a, uh, our world is a three-dimensional world, but picture something that is completely flat, like a square, picture a square, or picture uh, the face of this, which is a circle, uh, or even uh, a rectangle. Uh, those are known as two-dimensional shapes. And what makes them two-dimensional is the fact that you can measure them horizontally, you can measure them horizontally, and you can measure them vertically. They have two dimensions. They have a horizontal component and a vertical component. Even something like a circle, a circle has a horizontal component, it doesn't matter where you're measuring it, and then it has a vertical component depending on where you are measuring it. Uh, same thing with a rectangle. Obviously, we have a horizontal and a vertical component. Uh, so rectangles, triangles, squares, any kind of parallelogram, trapezoid, uh, etc. Those shapes all have only two dimensions. But consider a three-dimensional shape. So again, let's begin with a two-dimensional shape like a square. And when you see a square, again, you only have two dimensions. You have, for example, you have length and width or whatever, however you want to call each one of those. You have a horizontal component, a vertical component, but then you also have a depth to the shape. Not only do you have this and this, but you also have depth. You also have it going down this way. Uh, so that's where we get shapes like cubes. That's where we get shapes like uh, rectangular prisms. Uh, like boxes and the like. So that's what makes them a three-dimensional shape. And a three-dimensional shape, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you're literally measuring the amount of cubes that fit inside of that shape. So uh, don't be deceived by looking at this specific shape where it's made up of cubes, but really even if you are trying to measure the volume of this cup, you are trying to see how many cubic units fit inside of it. It may not be perfect, but, uh, but it is uh, the amount of cubes even if it's only part of a cube that fits in there. So yes, it is measured in cubic units. So you'll have things like inches cubed, uh, feet cubed, or, or cubic feet, cubic meters, cubic centimeters, et cetera. That is what that little three there means, that exponent means that we're measuring all three dimensions, one, two, three. And so uh, if we were gonna get the, the volume of a shape like a right rectangular prism, here I have a drawing of a right rectangular prism. And a right rectangular prism is actually a very common shape in our world because it's basically, uh, it's the shape of a box uh, or the shape of a book, right? This is a right rectangular prism. Um, what else? Uh, this would be a right rectangular prism, et cetera. So um, I can get, a box. So if we see a box like this one, sorry. So notice that a right rectangular prism, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, it's basically um, a whole bunch of rectangles. And every single angle that you see is a right angle. And opposite faces are the same. So this face is the same as this face. This face right here on the side is the same as this face on the side as far as its units. And the top face is the same as the bottom face as far as the units and the shape. So that's what makes a right rectangular prism a right rectangular prism. And so I'm going to use this as an example. This is an example of a right rectangular prism so that we can easily see. And whenever you're getting the volume of a right rectangular prism, if you were to look it up on the star uh, reference sheet, you would see something like this. Big B base times the height. Big B base times the height. Now, please do not confuse this with the area of a uh, of a parallelogram, which the area parallelogram would be little b base 
times height. In a parallelogram, like this rectangle right here, uh, based on size would be length times width, right? Or length times width, depending on how you want to see it. You're just measuring those two. But in a in a uh, rectangular prism, like the one that we have here, when we're saying base, we're talking about the face of the bottom shape. This would be the base. Or if I'm holding it like this, this would be the base. It doesn't matter. In this shape that we see here on, our, on my drawing, we can see that uh, that shape in the bottom, that blue, that is a rectangular that is a that is a a, a a rectangle. That is a rectangle. That would be considered the base. So base, ladies and gentlemen, is just the area of that shape on the bottom. It is just the area of that shape. So in this case, that would be three times four. That is my length times the width. You can consider that the base times the height of that rectangle on the bottom. All right. So you're just getting the base of that shape on the bottom, which if it's a rectangle, it's just length times width or base times height. So you're getting that area, the area of the bottom base, and then you're going to multiply it by the height or depth, whatever you want to call it. In essence, guys, you're met, you're, you are multiplying all three dimensions. You're multiplying this dimension, which is the horizontal dimension, which happens to be three. It doesn't matter if you measure it uh, here in the front or here in the back, it's still going to be three. It would be like measuring this. In this case, this is actually uh, four, but four. It doesn't matter if you measure here or here, this is four. Um, and then you're measuring uh, this component, which uh, some people might call that the height or the depth. Uh, so now not only are you measuring this, but you're measuring this. Uh, and, it, and then you're measuring, uh, you're multiplying that times the height here. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, yes, you're just measuring all three. This times this times that. Now, please, ladies and gentlemen, do not confuse this. Notice that no matter if you measure it here in the front, here in the back, or here in the side, this distance is two. So I don't have to multiply two times two. I've already measured that distance. So no matter where you measure it, that distance is two. So it's two times whatever this distance is, which happens to be three, times whatever this distance is, which happens to be four. So two times three times four. Notice that all three of those are going in a different direction. This is going this way. This is going this way. And the four is the depth that's going that way. All right? So it doesn't matter how you multiply it. Multiplication is commutative. It's just three times four times two. In a cube, it's the exact same thing, except that a cube is made up of squares. It's made up of squares. So every single face is a square, meaning that every single side will be exactly the same units. And actually, this is a better representation of the cube that you see in front of you. Notice it doesn't matter how you see it, every side is two. So while the volume really still is base uh, length times width times height, uh, you just say side to the third power because every side, every variable is exactly the same. So whatever the side is, you multiply it times itself and then you multiply times itself again. So in this case, it would be two times two times two. So two times two times two. So that's why we just say side to the third power. But again, it's just length times width times height. It just happens to be the same number. So in this case, it would be two to the third power or two times two times two. And two times two times two will be eight. So the answer will be eight inches cubed. Ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it. Uh, we're going to keep it simple. And um, hopefully this video was sufficient. And with that in mind, I will see you next time.